get ready for the second Sunday of Advent. And our readings introduce us to the character, who's very powerful and very interesting, of John the Baptist. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. The beginning of the Gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Behold, I am sending my messenger ahead of you. He will prepare your way, a voice of one crying out in the desert. Prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. John the Baptist appeared in the desert, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. People of the whole Judean countryside and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem were going out to him and were being baptized by him in the Jordan River as they acknowledged their sins. John was clothed in camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist. He fed on locusts and wild honey. And this is what he proclaimed, One mightier than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop and loosen the thongs of his sandals. I have baptized you with water. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Last week I mentioned how we're waiting for the coming of Christ. We're waiting both for his second coming and for the ways in which the living Christ from heaven speaks to us and acts in and through the sacraments and the living church. And today, we meet the character of John the Baptist, who has one particular message here at the beginning. He is the messenger of the Lord. He's one who goes before. Uh, <laughs> this is going to be a little controversial, but he's the Brett Favre to Jesus' Aaron Rodgers. Okay. So, all right, no more hate mail. Okay, okay. Um, but John the Baptist has a very particular message. He's standing out here in the desert, and people are coming to him from all over. It says like the whole Judean countryside and all of Jerusalem are coming here to John the Baptist. And John the Baptist's message is not the kind of message you would think would attract such a broad and wide crowd. His message is what? Baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. He would ask people to come and receive baptism as they acknowledged their sins. Last time we talked about how, like Father Ryan, we have to go up and set ourselves in position right, to watch. We have to put ourselves in a place to experience God, to meet the risen Christ. John the Baptist today says that it's in the acknowledgement of our sins. It's in the admission, acknowledgement of our guilt, of our failings, that we need a Redeemer. But that is the first place to go if we want to meet Christ. As we prepare ourselves to receive Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament, as we prepare ourselves to celebrate the birthday of Christ, as we prepare ourselves one day to see the second coming of our Lord, we have to start by acknowledging our sins. And the way we do that as Catholics is to meet Christ present in the sacrament of reconciliation. John the Baptist calls us to the repentance of our sins, to the forgiveness of our sins. But he just pointed the way ahead. He pointed ahead to Christ who would bring that forgiveness of sins. And Christ brought that forgiveness of sins. He said to many, your sins are forgiven. And he gave that power to forgive sins to the community that he founded, the church. And we today have that gift that Christ gave us in the sacrament of confession, the forgiveness of sins. So as we go through Advent, let's take some time to prepare ourselves, recollect our sins, acknowledge our failings, and then to go to confession, to imitate what John the Baptist told us, to follow what he asked us to do, to acknowledge our sins, and to go to the risen Christ and receive from him in confession that forgiveness.